Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Help for the Guiltless. My name, of course, is Antoine, and things have been going a little crazy as of late, haven't they, this last week? I mean, the live streams are getting a bigger audience, people are showing up more, they're enjoying the content, I enjoy that, but dealing with certain people has been quite exhausting. And on top of that, the last couple of videos have been, well, rather serious. And you know what my theory is, I want to entertain as well as inform. So I thought I would lighten things up a little bit, give you something to laugh at. So I was going to come into my office, find something funny to talk about, and lo and behold, like manna from heaven, there was an article sitting on my desk. And believe it or not, it was from the trio. When I say something ridiculous came from those three, either you should be frightened or prepared for a good ride. So here we have it. From Autostraddle. I've never heard of this website before. Like a little act of vengeance. Fucking while fat. Just the, just the headline itself. I mean, are they serious about this? Let's just jump into this, shall we? As Philip DeFranco is wont to say. They start with a quote. There's an intimacy with hunger, desire, digging, and fat sex. Our work as fat folks to see our self-doubt for what it is. Not some innate truth, but plain old exploitive capitalism. Literally works up in an appetite, and fulfilling it can be one of the most delicious experiences imaginable by max capacity. They're talking about the fetishization of chubby and fat people. <laughs> they're working up an appetite because they're trying to touch their toes. Oh god. Exploitive capitalism. Are they serious? Well, from reading that, we can get a good handle on what the fuck we're in store for. The fear of fat is real. Of course it is. So is clogged arteries and a massive coronary by the age of 37. If you're a queer girl, you've spent your entire life around other girls picking apart their bodies alongside you. Except you were way more focused on their bodies than your own and the Twinkies that you were shoving into your face. You know, these feelings affect not only you, but your friends and potentially all of your past, current and future lovers. No, no it doesn't. It can't affect your past, current or future lovers. It only affects you. If they're with you, it's because they want to be with you. I'm going to put that out there right now. Alyssa D'Alessandro grew up uneasy with her body until romantic partners assured her she was sexy. This is often how fat positivity starts, with a taste of desire that makes one feel, well, normal. We're dealing with fat positivity. I'm okay with body positivity. I'm okay with you being positive about your image. It is not okay to be 600 pounds. That whole sexy at any size stops at a certain size. When I started dating women, I became very conscious of how women talk about their bodies. Are you objectifying them? Shame on you. As a, as a female in the LGBTQ LMNOP two soul alphabet soup community, you should not be objectifying women. How dare you? It motivated me to work harder at breaking some of the negative self-talk. D'Alessandro founded the brand and blog Ready to Stare, and now specializes in clothing and lingerie reviews, most notably her queer perspective on the Savage X Fenty line and genderqueer under things. What the fuck is a Fenty? Is that like a flannel panty? Someone, someone look that up! God, I gotta start hiring people that actually do these things for me. If fat is feared, those who feel any proximity to it can tend to bring forth feelings of monstrosity, or in this age, even worse, sexual undesirability. No, the only thing people feel in your proximity is gravity. One of the things that really makes fat people feel less than normal is the lack of access to the material trappings of seduction. You know, what makes them feel less normal is the additional 200 to 300 pounds they have on top of them. Like lingerie or strap-on harnesses. Is that what this is about? You can find a strap-on harness that'll fit the dildo so you can plow your tiny girlfriend. Make one. Take a belt. Use some ingenuity. For Christ's sake, what's wrong with you? And we love to talk about it. Of course you do. You like getting offended by things. Like that one time you got mistaken for being Shamu walking around. Where do I find a harness for my fat body, or lingerie, or anything sexy? Has been the number one question fielded towards me on the matter of fat sex. For years, the lesbian staple Rodeo H 
was under fire for not being able to make popular undies in bigger sizes. Oh dear god. While the queer world went googly-eyed over the product, fatter queers were left out of that experience. Are you saying that you're the minority of the minorities? You've ticked all the boxes. As queers, we try to create these open spaces to love and live, and yet, we still come up against the heteronormative trappings of size and desire. Alright, alright, back up the bread truck. And I know the beeping is coming from the truck and not you. Heteronormative trappings of size. There is no heteronormative trappings of size. You're bigger than you're supposed to be. This is getting into dangerous territory where we're talking about Riley Dennis saying if you don't sleep with trans people, you're a bigot. <laughs> Congratulations, you're a fat, queer bitch. Just fucking deal with it. Eat a salad. Things have changed for the better recently. Oh, so she started eating the salad. But whenever you're talking about products, you're talking about how fat people are being marketed to or not marketed to, included or ignored. No! What's going on in the market, it's supply and demand. There are more, well, since you use the term normal, I'll use normal, there are more normal people out there than there are fat people looking for a strap-on harness. So they are trying to push more of a wide berth than you do when you decide to go into a pool. They're not trying to ignore you. It's just not designed for you. And if you don't like that, you have to find an alternative. So, there's your dose of empathy. Being fat is hard. And if you're not fat, and you've never felt fat, you should listen up. Because if you don't, she's gonna walk past you. And the gravity coming off of her is gonna pull you away from whatever you're doing that's actually important. You should feel this for a second, but then who doesn't? In a fat-hating society, every one of us is fat. Even those 80 pound anorexic girls who should be above 140, they're fat too. Doesn't matter. Everyone in a fat hating society is fat, you dumb cow. Sorry, I didn't mean to culturally appropriate that one. Fat phobia has no size limit. Fat phobia is not a thing. I'm sure there are people who are genuinely afraid of fat people, but the way that you're using it, it doesn't exist. Putting phobia at the end of any noun doesn't mean that it becomes a fear. I hate these people. Arachnophobia is a fear. Hydrophobia is a fear. Flubberphobia is not a fear. Anti-fat messaging is a tool of the corporate machine to keep us all in our places, weaving a tapestry of trauma. I swear to God, if she's gonna blame this on corporations and the patriarchy, I'm gonna lose my shit. Fat is a feminist issue. How? How is it? What? No. 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 That, no, that's not how it works. Again, this is just like the phobia thing. You can't just say something is a feminist issue. You may be a fat feminist, but that doesn't mean it's a feminist issue. Men are fat too. God damn. You know, I thought sea life was supposed to be smarter than this. It's about how much space we take up. Yeah, yes it is. It's always about the space that you take up because you're taking it from other people. And how we take our bodies back from corporations and the patriarchy. Alright, this has to be a fucking po. This can't be real. You're blaming you not being able to stop from eating on the patriarchy. Heteronormative patriarchy. That's why you can't stop shoving ding-dongs down your gullet. Oh god. It's about undoing and unlearning decades of misinformation about nutrition and movement. Decades of misinformation about nutrition. Are you saying that you shouldn't be on a 2,000 calorie or less diet? That it's okay to eat 6,000, 7,000 calories a day? Or that movement doesn't actually do anything? You need to add weight to it. You need to have effort to burn the calories that are built up in your system. Economics. Economics, yes, because fat people don't get raises. Class. Race and privilege. I've seen more fat white people than I have any other people. But this is about class, race and privilege. Sure, sure, we'll go with that. What the fuck have I got my... God damn it, Trio. I blame this on you. I still, despite decades of work, feel unfuckable often. So what you're saying is, is you share something in common with Lena Dunham. She feels unfuckable all the time. Part of me still feels too fat to fuck. 
or too fat to love, or too fat to live. This is a self-esteem issue, darling. It's not something that you're going to get over anytime soon. My last real girlfriend tended to worship my fatness as something different from her. Oh, so you were dating a chubby chaser? You know, I heard that when you have sex with someone who's a chubby chaser and into the fatness, they tend to want to feed you during sex. Is that something that happened? Is it cake or is it steak or is it veg- No, it can't be vegetables. You need things that are high in saturated fat. Maybe she just shoved a Twinkie where the sun don't shine. And to be honest, I probably did the same with her thinness. We both had an unattainable hotness that we saw in each other. And I've got to think that's what sparked an understanding for me that when it comes to sex and feelings, that was an unfinished sentence, but whatever, uh, I've dealt enough with those. You both had unattainable hotness? Well, since I don't have a picture of your girlfriend, and I saw what you look like, I can't say that you're not an unattractive woman. You're just not my type. You carry yourself very well, and you sound like you're somewhat educated, so I'm sure that was more what your girlfriend was infatuated with than your fat libido, I guess you could say. You, on the other hand, saw your girlfriend as something as unattainable. You couldn't believe that she was skinny and wanted to be with you. In essence, you kind of used her. You should feel bad. I realize none of us can ever be each other. We can only be ourselves. We should lean into that. Hmm, well, you're right in personality. We can't ever be someone else. You can try and it always comes off fake. Uh, you can also just understand that everyone is different. But in the case of your relationship, darling, there's a little something different that you could have changed. And that was your choice into not losing weight. You see, this whole thin privilege, uh, fat shaming, fat positivity, this whole thing is choice. That's the difference. You can choose not to eat. Now when I say not to eat, I don't mean starving yourself. I'm talking about you can choose not to have that second helping of cake. You could choose not to let the trainers give you that extra fish. I mean, you can do a lot of things to help you lose weight. That's why it's not a privilege, it's a choice. I only figured out fat sex when I wasn't having any of it. Employing time alone and learning how to breathe again after a series of heartbreaks and periods of body dysmorphia. Wait a second. Hold on, hold on. You think being fat is something to do with body dysmorphia? You know, I'm sure the transgender community would love to hear about this. Look, I'm going to continue on with the article. Give me just a second. I have to make a phone call. This is really important. I hate to do it in the middle of recording, but this needs to be dealt with. Riley? No, Riley. It's Antoine. Yes, the black one. Look, um, did you know that fat people consider being overweight body dysmorphia? No, I understand that. Uh, Riley, don't call them that. You're better than that, don't be a bigot. Oh, um, yeah, I can send you the link, don't worry. Yes, Riley, I understand. You want to come back to America and visit me too. Look, it's not going to work, darling. Well, because you don't have a vagina. I'm not a bigot. You're just... Yes, Riley. I know you're sorry. I know you didn't mean it. We'll talk again, I promise. Have a good night, Riley. Sorry, I hope you guys didn't hear any of that. It was kind of private. Um, let's, let's get on with the recording, yeah? You can try doing what I did if you feel lost in the fold. All right, hold on. You leave the jokes to the professionals. You keep this pun shit back where it belongs in Facebook posts and on Twitter. Be alone and feel yourself for a while in a space free of comparisons or insecurity. It is always okay to say no. Even if just to feel yourself. I'm a little uncomfortable about the second half of that paragraph. Um, I think she's telling everyone to masturbate. Especially if you're overweight. I don't need her telling me to masturbate. Um, I don't want to. I, that's not my thing. Definitely if I do, it's not going to be thinking about her. I mean, once you've seen one elephant seal, you've seen them all. 
I will pitch in here by saying being vocally proud of your plus size date and showing your appreciation on social media goes a long way in this modern world. That's right, like a show pony. Show them off. Put them in different types of clothes, costumes. Make sure everyone knows that you are fetishizing fat women and make them feel special. That's exactly what they're saying. It's so easy to internalize all the stigma, shame and hate around fat sexuality. It's easy because it's funny. It's up to you to be able to distinguish what you can and can't risk, what you can and can't face. And if someone is truly being a jackass, just call them out on it. I mean, you may get an amazing Spurgfest in the form of a stream, who knows? It's easy to doubt your sex appeal because there are literally millions of dollars of marketing money being spent every year to make you feel like no one could possibly find you attractive, explains maximum capacity. Yes, and I agree that the beauty industry definitely needs to get their shit wrecked. The beauty industry goes around telling everyone what supposed beauty standards are, and it's these beauty standards that get pushed around on men and women. The beauty industry is bullshit. The way that I look at it, fuck who you want. That's all that matters. Fucking as fat folks who have broken through the other side of that internalized shame and instead know exactly how gorgeous and deserving of pleasure they are is an incredibly joyful and fulfilling thing to share. Well, if it's one thing that they're definitely breaking through, it's the Earth's crust. I mean, most of these people live in Southern California. You wonder why the San Andreas Fault is always being threatened to go off? All we need to do is have all of the overweight people in Los Angeles jump at the same time. When they hit the ground, it'll set off the big one. I don't know, but that sounds like someone you'd want to show off, like I stated before. They don't want you to actually love these people. They just want you to fuck them, fetishize them, and show them off. It's a weird form of, I guess, furry dumb. I mean, I know there's scalies, uh, there's furries, there's featheries. Those are the ones that go after the birds. What are the ones that go after sea life? Like, what are the ones that like whales? I don't know. Fishies? Are they fishies? No, they can't be fishies because whales aren't fish. They're mammals. Um, I'll have to look that up eventually. It's not something I really want to know, but now my interest has peaked. So go on. Get your revenge. You deserve it. Fuck. While fat. Don't wait. How is this exactly revenge? Are you getting revenge on your partner? Are you getting revenge on the patriarchy? Are you getting revenge on heteronormativity? I mean, what are you getting revenge on? I mean, I understand that revenge is a dish best served cold. In this case, they went on a midnight bender and you found them passed out in the fridge the next morning. Surround yourself with beauty and movement. Let your skin breathe. Or not. No, people don't want to see that. Cover up. I don't want to know that you have back titties. Adorn yourself and modify anything you'd like. Enjoy your body the best you can. It's the only one you've got. Give it the chance it needs to be a part of you. Well, there's a really good chance that if you took care of yourself, the only body you've got will last you a good long time. 75, 80 years. Your body is eventually going to give up on you. You need to take care of it. So yes, enjoy your body the best you can, but while you're enjoying it, don't you think you should take care of it? Adorn it, give yourself necklaces, give yourself earrings, give yourself nose rings, lip rings, eye rings, belly button piercings, nipple piercings, clip piercings, give yourself full body tattoos, give yourself a tramp stamp, give yourself a little ankle tattoo that is the Japanese symbol for water, whatever you want to do, but at least take care of your body, because if you take care of it, it's going to take care of you. And those are my thoughts, folks. I'd love to know yours. Let me know in the comments. And if you want to keep the fun going, there's a link to my Discord down below. You can jump on in and talk to me, Sarah, and the trio in the hideout. Or if you want to talk to the people behind the voices, you can go behind the scenes and we can have ourselves a conversation there. Or you can follow me on Twitter or Gab, where I will post randomly. And all of those links are also down below and if you'd like to support the channel and i really hope you do there's a patreon link down below where i have some very interesting reward tiers 
For as little as a dollar a month, you can join the patron-only hangout, or you can climb the ranks of the Army of Snarkness. Why don't you go ahead and check it out, see if there's anything you like. And if you want to support the channel with one-time donations, my Streamlabs is down below, as well as PayPal. But, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Help for the Guildless. My name, of course, is Antoine, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening.